Hi, everybody. Uh, as I said, good morning or early afternoon to those of you here with us in the States and later in the afternoon or perhaps evening for those of you watching from Europe and especially for Professor uh, Milet Chamir, who's joining us today from Tel Aviv University. Uh, I'm very excited uh, to host her and talk to her about all things uh, academia, Israel, Israel, US as part of our academia talk series. And especially uh, we're fortunate to have her here with us within the context of uh, Women's History Month. So it's always good to see leading and influential women. Uh, Professor Milet Shamir is the Vice President for Academic International Affairs at Tel Aviv University and a researcher in the field of American Studies in the Faculty of Humanities. Professor Shamir joined Tel Aviv University in 1998 after earning her PhD from Brandeis University. Her research on 19th century, century literary and cultural history has been published by Columbia University Press, Penn University Press, and other leading venues. She has been invited as a visiting researcher to several universities, including Duke University, the University of Texas in Austin, and New York University. Shamir is currently the editor-in-chief of the journal po Poetic Poetics Today, and from 2015 to 2019, she served as Vice Dean for Humanities and Academic Affairs. She co-founded Tel Aviv University's American Studies program in 2006 and served as its head for 13 years. She served as chair of the Department of English and American Studies from 2006 to 2009. In 2012, she founded TAUs or Tel Aviv University's pioneering undergraduate program for international students, and we'll talk about it today, uh, the BA in Liberal Arts, and she served as its academic director until 2016. As I said, we're very, very happy and fortunate to have you with us today, Professor Shamil. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you for the invitation. That's great. And before we go into the talk with you, which we'll delve into the different topics, uh, let's just get a feel for Tel Aviv University in this short clip that you brought for us. This isn't just a university. It's your gate, your first step, the spark, the place where it all begins. This is not a lawn. It's a celebration of ideas, a festival of thoughts, a sea of opinions. This is not the sky. It's the freedom to dream, to soar, to imagine, to create, to improvise. This is not a storeroom for costumes. This is everyone you wish to be or not to be. Everything you wish to do. If you, if it's okay with you, we'll just jump right in. 
uh, a little bit that Tel Aviv University is located in the center or very uh, close to the center of the city of uh, Tel Aviv Yafo, which is known as the hub or or the heart of uh, Israeli innovation, Israeli high tech uh, technology. Most of our you know companies that there afterwards we see them on Nasdaq and are bought uh, by huge by Google and other huge American uh, or not just American companies start in Tel Aviv. And in this video, and if you can talk about it just a little bit, they're saying you know the, the classroom is not a classroom, right? The lab is not a lab. It actually is. It can, it's something else. It's a place to discover and a place to go into the unknown. So can you tell us a little bit about this sentiment uh, that Tel Aviv University, I know, tries to incorporate in all its different schools, and as well as talk about a little bit about the internationalization of Tel Aviv University that you're in charge of, and what does this mean in this context? Uh, sure, yeah, you already brought a lot of uh, different issues to the table, so uh, maybe I'll start with the first thing that you mentioned, and that is the relationship between uh, Tel Aviv University and the city of Tel Aviv, um, because that is obviously a very important feature uh, of our university, the fact that it is located in Tel Aviv. There's a synergy between the city of Tel Aviv and uh, Tel Aviv University campus, uh, uh, almost like, you know, NYU and its connection to New York City. Um, you know, Tel Aviv University would not be what it is had it not been located in the city of Tel Aviv, and the city of Tel Aviv would not have been the same uh, without the university. Um, so, it, how would I how would I try to characterize the synergy between the city and uh, and the university? Um, we have to talk about uh, the spirit of Tel Aviv as a city, uh, the vibe of Tel Aviv. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people who are listening in uh, have been to Tel Aviv and know it. Um, so what I'll say now will ring true to them, um, but maybe a way to think about the vibe of Tel Aviv is to, uh, to remember a little bit of its history, right? It was established, what is it, about 110 years ago, and it became the first modern Hebrew city uh, modeled on the European cities with cafes and hotels and cultural institutions. You know, it soon became the city that never sleeps. <laughs> but very importantly, it also grew uh, alongside uh, Jaffa, right? And Jaffa is one of the oldest uh, port cities in the world. Um, it is 3,000 years old. It is dominated by Arab culture, by Middle Eastern tradition. And, you know, and Tel Aviv was united with Jaffa. So this combination made the city kind of explode with, uh, with energy, with creativity, and it created this really special mix, I think, of uh, multiculturalism, pluralism, um, openness, tolerance, right? And all these things, all these energies uh, are, very much, are very much present, I think, also on the Tel Aviv University uh, campus. We're a very diverse campus, very committed to pluralism, uh, to freedom, freedom of thought, freedom of expression, uh, with a very creative vibe. Uh, and part of that, uh, Tami, is, is what you mentioned before, and that is the fact that, among other things, uh, Tel Aviv is also uh, uh, the startup city of the startup nation, right? This is where nice. the most important uh, high-tech industry is located in Israel, where at any given moment there are hundreds of, uh, of startups, uh, growth companies, uh, multinational companies. And Tel Aviv University draws from this, you know, its spirit of, uh, of, of innovation. It also contributes to it. Uh, some of the things that we're really proud of uh, uh, here at Tel Aviv University is the fact that we are, uh, for example, repeatedly ranked among the top 100 universities uh, in terms of innovation. Uh, we're number eight in the top 10 universities that produce uh, VC-backed founders. Uh, we're the only non-American university in the top really? 10 list. Yes. Wow. Ahead of such schools as Princeton and Yale, I might add. Um, we, we're the first university in Israel in terms of the number of patents that we filed. So there's a real connection between, you know, the startup city and, and Tel Aviv University uh, in that sense. Uh, and maybe I'll add just one more thing to the mix, and that is that uh, Tel Aviv is also, you know, it's a city of arts, city of uh, culture. Uh, it's the cultural capital of Israel. Uh, you know, Tel Aviv has given birth to uh, great talent in, in music, in dance, in film, uh, you know, talent that sometimes set a new international standard for, for excellence. 
Uh, and it's one of my favorite stories about Tel Aviv University is that when it was founded uh, in the 1960s, there was a big debate in Israel. You know, not everybody remembers that or well, was alive at this point, but there was really a question. You know, people ask, why do we need another university in Israel? Right? There's Hebrew University, that's the big research university, you know, with all its, uh, uh, you know, the, the honor of being the first university. There's the Technion in Haifa, which does the, you know, the kind of the engineering uh, uh, fields. Um, Bar Ilan was just born as a kind of a, re a more religious uh, school. So why do we need another university in Tel Aviv? You know, everything is so small in Israel. And the mayor of Tel Aviv, who at that time was uh, Mordechai Namir, he said that the reason why we need a university in Tel Aviv is because Tel Aviv is a cultural center. It's the cultural center of Israel. So you need a university that would reflect that. And so when Tel Aviv University was, uh, was established, uh, it became the only university in Israel to have a, um, uh, an, an arts faculty. Wow. Um, and the arts faculty is very important on campus. You know, just to give a few examples, we have the Bookman Meta School of Music, uh, that is uh, really one of the, the best schools uh, around the world for, um, uh, for music. It partners with the Israeli Philharmonic Orchestra in Tel Aviv to provide uh, elite music education to international students. Uh, we have the, the Tisch School of Film and Television that is one of the most important uh, dynamos in <laughs> yeah. Israel's uh, kind of growing film and TV industry. And, you know, I could go on and on, but it's, you know, it's, it's that connection, not just high tech, but also culture that I think is very important uh, in, in, in terms of the relationship between the campus and the city. And, and also, by the way, what you said about only in the 1960s that Tel Aviv University was founded, it's so ingrained uh, these days, well, as you said, you're one of the leading schools in many in many different aspects in the world. But in Israel, it's so ingrained Tel Aviv University uh, that I think um, that people don't even bother. To, you know, it, it is an interesting story that you said it was an, an issue that had to be discussed whether to open it or not, because it's such a, it's really it is part of Tel Aviv uh, now. And I think even those who don't live and went uh, you know to other universities secretly, I'm telling you, like me, <laughs> but. But it, it 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 is a thing. It's an institution, and and it's it's interesting That's to right. learn that right. it's hard to imagine Israel today without Tel Aviv University, which yeah. has become since you know the largest university in in Israel with uh, around thirty thousand students studying here. So, yeah, it's hard to remember um, an Israel before there was Tel Aviv University. Absolutely, and and so this goes. You're so well ingrained in the city, and and you know the city comes into the campus, and the campus and the student go out to the city. Um, but you're also, you know, you're looking internationally. You are, and you're in charge of making uh, Tel Aviv or the research or what you're doing to make it international. Can you tell us? Uh, and we'll go. Uh, can you tell us about that? What does the university actively do, and why is it important to be part of the? of the international culture of academia? Sure, yeah, thank you for asking about that because that truly is my passion these days, uh, this, this uh, goal of internationalizing the university. Um, why is it important? Well, you know, I could start with, uh, with something that's obvious and that is that universities, uh, research universities are in their very essence, you know, and from the time in which they were born in Europe, um, internationalization is part of their DNA, right? The goal of a research university is to advance knowledge. Right. And knowledge thrives when it can move freely, right? When it's not stopped by national borders or checkpoints, when it can kind of circulate around the globe. So the best universities have always been um, international. But I think that uh, some of the developments of recent decades, like um, uh, globalization, uh, easy, e easier travel, you know, before Corona, <laughs> um, the digital revolution, of course, um, all these development, all these developments meant that um, major universities are taking a much more active stance towards internationalization, uh, investing a lot of uh, resources and energies in internationalizing the university. And Tel Aviv University is certainly among uh, among those universities. Uh, we have a uh, developed a strategic plan uh, that which aim is to very significantly increase uh, Tel Aviv University's international uh, presence, its uh, international impact, its international visibility over the next few years. 
uh, which is not to say that we, you know, that we're not already a, a pretty international university. You know, we have uh, several hundreds of uh, agreements with uh, with institutions around the world. We have uh, joint degree programs with uh, universities like uh, Columbia and Northwestern and. Uh, Peking University in China, but we have uh, over 2,000 students come every year from all over the world, but we, are, we, are, we have the potential to grow a lot more in that area, and that's what I'm working on. Yeah, yeah. so two questions I just want to ask. When you say a joint degree, can you tell us a little what does it mean? What if a, if a student now going to Columbia, you know, going here to Columbia, how do they actually study? What degree do they get? Just explain it to us a little bit. Sure. Uh, it's a wonderful, it's a wonderful model, and it's one that we are really seeking to um, expand. Um, every joint degree is a little different. The joint degree that we have with Columbia University is actually a dual degree program, and what that means is that uh, students, and you know, these are all excellent students who are, you know, who managed to get into both these uh, universities. Uh, they come to Tel Aviv for two years. They study here. After completing these two years, they move to New York and study for two years at Columbia. And at the end of uh, these four years, they get, get this, not one, but two <laughs> degrees. They get a degree, a BA from Tel Aviv University and a BA from no. Columbia. In the same um, subject? They can major in two different things in the two different schools. So that is a, you know, that is a model uh, that we uh, that we love. You know, it's a, it's a new program for us, but it's you know, it's a it's a wonderful opportunity for for Israeli students to go to New York, for American students and other international students to come here, uh, and it's certainly something that uh, you know, this kind of model is something that we are uh, uh, willing to or wanting to uh, um, expand. And uh, a question, I, I might be a little bit uh, lay persons very, but it's all in English, right? It's all in English. Yes, it's all in, in English. Um, and uh, one of the things that we're working on now is also to make sure that Tel Aviv University offers a variety of courses in all fields in English, because that would be the basis for developing uh, these kinds of uh, international programs. Uh, you asked, you know, what, why is it important? And maybe I'll say a few words about that. Um, there are a lot of reasons why a university needs to be international, um, but I'll give you my top three very briefly. First and foremost, internationalization is crucial for research, right? International collaboration between researchers produces the best research. Um, and it also ensures that this research has visibility and recognition on a world stage, right? So I was just listening to a talk uh, by some of my colleagues in the UK, you know, the people in the UK are now very worried about what will be the consequences of Brexit, um, you know, are British universities still going to be able to have international academic collaborations? So they did this study and, and they found that articles that are authored through international collaborations get four or five times the exposure of articles that are authored by a person wow. from a single location. So it's really astounding how important that is. And part of what we're doing at, at Tel Aviv University is to create a kind of a wide and a deep network of collaborations with uh, uh, you know, great universities around the world in order to provide that, um, that uh, environment for, for research collaboration. So, so that's one thing, right? A very important thing we already began to talk about, and that is uh, to bring uh, international students in. Um, we want to be able to bring the best students from around the world uh, to Tel Aviv uh, on all levels, you know, undergraduates, graduate students, postdocs, short term, full degrees. Uh, and that's super important for us. And it's important for us not because uh, international students are, are money makers for universities, as some people mistakenly uh, assume. Uh, you know, in, in Israel universities, education is subsidized, tuition is very low, right? We're not, uh, we're not interested in international students for that reason. We're interested in international students because of uh, diversity on campus. Uh, and diversity is, again, it's key to quality research. I have a, a friend who teaches in the, in the chemistry uh, school here, and, and he always says to me, you know, when I sit in, a, in my lab, and there are the Israeli research students, and then there's 
a research student from California, and there's one from Germany, and there's one from Singapore, uh, and there's one from Brazil, this guarantees that there are going to be creative solutions to problems in the lab. Okay, you know, interesting. It, yeah, it's just, you know, it's a matter of having all these diverse uh, points of views and, and different academic trainings that create this, uh, uh, this kind of out of the box thinking um, in, in, our, in our various schools and disciplines. Uh, so that's the second thing, right? Having a lot of international programs, a lot of international students. We have over 20 international programs at the moment in areas oh. that Tel Aviv University is, uh, is strong at, you know, archaeology, cybersecurity, um, um, diplomacy, Middle Eastern studies. I could go on and on, but it's okay. really very, a very wide span. Um, and I'll just say quickly what the third thing is, um, which is, I think is no less important, uh, you know, why internationalize? So there's research, there are international students, but there are also the Israeli students. Um, we, have, we have a responsibility, I think, as a university to give Israeli students uh, better exposure to the world and better skills to lead a life that is global and not just local, right? To become global citizens to have the tools to succeed in, in a global market. So part of what we're trying to do in internationalizing the university is to make sure that um, our students get the language skills that they need in English. So a lot of courses in English, again, something we already brought up, uh, internationalizing the curriculum, uh, providing uh, opportunities for Israeli students to go abroad and study and do internships, right? All these things are, are very, very crucial. And of course, all these things are linked to each other because if you have good international students, you will have good collaborations later on when they return to the country. When you have, you know, Israelis uh, alongside international students, you have this internationalization at home uh, created for the Israeli students. So it all together kind of creates um, an ecosystem of uh, internationality, uh, which is what our, basically we're trying to uh, strengthen here on campus. No, no, I love this. And I love uh, the responsibility that you take for, for the Israeli students. It's something that I never thought about or never heard of from other places. And you're absolutely right, you know, today in this world, and we grew up in a bit of a different world, perhaps, but everything is so connected and so immediate that I think many, uh, students, especially who are now, they might, they feel like global citizens already. And if you come and nurture it for them and, and, you know, teach them and educate them accordingly, uh, you'll get uh, afterwards, you know, what better diplomats or researchers or Middle East analysts, if they do get to experience, you know, the student next to them will not be somebody they're very familiar with and will get to collaborate with other universities or get, you know, professors in from other places. I think that's it's a it's an amazing holistic approach and uh, very correct. And, and Tammy, also better human beings, right? I mean, uh, <laughs> it's not just about career, even though career, of course, is very important. It's also about creating us graduates of Tel Aviv University who are able to understand different points of view, who are able to navigate between cultures, uh, who develop, you know, empathy and tolerance. Uh, these are, you know, assets that are, I think, as important as uh, as career uh, goals. Beautiful. Uh, and can we on internationalization, but can we uh, try to incorporate COVID? Because you said about students coming to Israel, the coronavirus pandemic, I'm assuming, and you'll tell us, stopped it almost completely. The same with Israeli students maybe going abroad or bringing research in. Uh, can you tell us how Tel Aviv University and how your job was affected by the coronavirus? Sure. <laughs> First of all, I'll say that I, I stepped into the position of Vice President International exactly as the virus hit last year. <laughs> so a lot of my dreams and uh, you know, visions for this job had to be kind of rethought and changed in light of the crisis. You know, certain things didn't change very dramatically. For example, you know, uh, if we were going to have an international conference on campus and we couldn't hold it on campus, we held it on Zoom. So it's not exactly the same. You know, nothing can replace the, the human interactions in a conference, but there are also advantages, you know, more people show up. Where COVID-19 hit uh, hard is with bringing international students to campus um, and caring for them. Um, 
unlike I think a lot of other universities, we decided early on not to suspend our international programs and to allow students who want to come uh, to do so. Uh, and those who want to stay at home and learn through Zoom, that was also fine. But we did end up uh, bringing a significant number of students uh, to campus. And the challenges oh. were, Tommy, I can tell you, they were enormous. I uh, can. <laughs> <laughs> the skies opened and then they closed and then they opened again and they closed again. Right? And quarantine and not and... Quar quarantine, you know, we have to, we're bring, we're picking these students up from the airport, we're bringing them into our dorms where they have to stay in a room for two weeks and we have to care for, to provide their every need. Um, it was very, very uh, complicated, sometimes very frustrating for students, sometimes very frustrating for us. But it was also a learning experience uh, because I think that one of the important lessons that we learned is, you know, what a huge responsibility these universities have towards their international uh, students, you know, that far exceeds the academic responsibility. Uh, you know, being an international student is not easy. You're going to another country, you're going to another culture where you don't speak the language. If you're coming to Israel, as you know, Israel can be a little bit overwhelming for a lot of people <laughs> who've never been here before. So to come during a global pandemic, you know, with all the vulnerabilities that, that this produces is really very, very hard. And, uh, and we had to, to become family uh, to these students. Uh, maybe I'll give you one, one, one story uh, oh, that was particularly uh, poignant. Um, one of her research students uh, from Australia uh, decided to come to Israel during the, the pandemic to do his research here. And unfortunately, in the first few months uh, of his stay here, he had a very severe medical crisis, not Corona, but something else. And for several weeks, he was on, on life support uh, in the hospital. Tragically, at the very same time, his father in Australia contracted Corona and passed away. Now <laughs> think about the situation, right? He's here in a, in a strange country, in a life-threatening situation. His family can't come because they're mourning the loss of the father and also they can't travel. Uh, when finally someone from the family was able to make it, he couldn't go into the hospital because of uh -huh. Corona restrictions. Uh -huh. And it's at moments like this that, you know, the university needs to step up and to take the place of family. And I'm, you know, I'm so proud of my, my colleagues and, and the staff at our international school who really dropped everything in order to be with his student, uh, you know, 24 seven, uh, yeah. to make life easier for his uncle to come and to see him through, through this crisis. Uh, he's now, you know, I'm happy to say he's healthy and he's back on campus, but uh, it really was a learning experience for all of us. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm really yeah. glad that we were able to, to step up to, to the plate. Um, no, yeah, dealing and, with such an extreme uh, situation, you know, it does then reflect, and I'm sure how you deal with the the students that are there and hopefully don't get into this, you know, who took it easier. But I wanted to ask about vaccines now, and you are saying you're having, you're still, this Australian students and others are still on campus. Can you tell us a little bit, what does campus life look now? Uh, do Are the students vaccinated? Did you help them there? Like how, if I came, oh, it's starting to be evening, if I came today to your campus, uh, to Tel Aviv University, what would I find? Well, that was another big operation uh, that um, eventually we were successful in, in, um, in the making happen. We decided at some point that we really need to uh, make sure that each and every one of our international students who wants to be vaccinated uh, would have the opportunity to do so. So we brought Magen David Adom, which is the National Ambulance uh, Service, um, to campus, and we set up shop in our auditorium, wow. and we ended up vaccinating around 400 people, you know, international and non-international. Uh, just last week, we gave them the second dose. Nice. And let me tell you, Tommy, this, the international students were incredibly happy. You should have seen the smiles on, on their faces, uh, really priceless. And as a result of that, you know, they, along with uh, the other Israeli students who are vaccinated, and very, very many uh, of them are, uh, are, are getting ready to uh, go back to the classroom uh, physically after the Passover break. So we're going to be able to be in a, in a room with students again, which wow. is very, very exciting. Wow. The big lectures, small lectures, everybody's going to be back on campus? Pretty much everybody um, who, who has been vaccinated. 
which is, you know, in Israel is uh, a majority of, of people. Right. Amazing. So uh, Amazing. it will be gradual, you know, it's the first year students first, the international students first, but eventually we're hoping that uh, everybody who can come uh, would be able to do so. And if somebody then is planning for the next school year come next October, then hopefully your gradual opening and will allow the university to be almost back to perhaps pre-corona for vaccinated people in the next, in the upcoming school year in September, October. That's what we're hoping for. Of course, one of the things we learned, Tammy, as you well know, <laughs> is not to make any predictions uh, this year. Um, things can change from uh, day to day, but if the trend continues as it is now, we're hopeful that we will resume something resembling normalcy in the next academic year. Um, amazing, amazing. And if we're already on campus, uh, well, not I'm not literally, but on campus, I wanted to ask you a bit about inclusivity uh, of different communities in Israel within Tel Aviv. We talked about, you know, being open to the world, being international, doing international exchanges from, from China to the US, California and New York, uh, but a little bit within Israeli society. Uh, I'll just say a quick word and then I'll, I'll let you because um, Israel is not a homogeneous society as uh, I don't know if all our listeners and viewers know this, but, you know, we have uh, even within the Jewish, uh, the Jewish part of the population, that's the, that's the largest part. We have a varied, a whole range of different people, different beliefs, different culture, different, uh, uh, not different, uh, different levels of religiosity or religion in each one. And of course, we have our Arab and Muslim students and Christians living in Israel and uh, Bedouins. We have really, really varied groups. Can you tell us a little bit now, looking back into Israel, what is the university actively doing in order to incorporate these students in, in order to be an, exclu an inclusive university within Israel? Yes, absolutely. Uh, um, you know, as much as internationalization is important on our agenda, uh, so is the promotion of, uh, of diversity on campus. And you said that Israel is, is, a, is a heterogeneous country. Um, you remember a long time ago, our, Israel's president, Ruby Rivlin, uh, very famously described it in terms of, you know, the different tribes of Israel, right? Uh, there's a tribe of the ultra-Orthodox Jews, and there's a tribe of the Muslim Arabs and the, of the secular Jews. Um, and really, I mean, one of the things that are interesting about that is that because we have uh, pretty much uh, separate uh, school systems for all these different tribes, the first place where they really come together is at the university. So um, the Israeli universities have a, a responsibility uh, to have a diverse student body. And also they have a national role to play in bringing those different tribes together into you know, interaction and, and, and connection. Um, so at Tel Aviv University, this uh, really is uh, a priority. Um, Maybe I'll give you two examples. Um, one is uh, the ultra-Orthodox community. Uh, I think that a lot of Israelis today uh, would say that uh, the future prosperity, resilience of Israel in many ways depends on the successful integration of the ultra-Orthodox community into the Israeli public sphere, into the, into the labor market, and this can only happen if the Haredim, right, the ultra-Orthodox, are given opportunities and access to higher education. Um, there was, I think there was a, last week, there was a short story in the newspaper that says it's, there's actually a, a very steep rise in the interest among uh, the ultra-Orthodox in enrolling in universities because of the corona crisis. Um, these communities, as you know, were, were hit particularly hard. Uh, health-wise and economically, and they understand the need to have access to, to higher education in order to so improve the predicament, right? So at Tel Aviv University, you know, we managed to increase the number of uh, Haredi students uh, significantly from two five <laughs> years ago <laughs> to 150 this year. Wow. You know, it's still not a huge number. Uh, 150 is not you know, where we would like to be. We would like to have many, many, many more. 
but it's it's you know it's we're trending in the right direction right this is what we right. want Huge to see percentages happen. if we look at percentages yeah that's right that's right and the other example um are uh, arab students um as a university, we have um, an interest to attract the best Arab students in Israel to come to Tel Aviv University to keep them here once they are admitted. And maybe that's, you know, there's a way also to tie that in with the culture of high tech and innovation and entrepreneurship, because we talked a little bit about kind of Tel Aviv as a, as a startup nation. I think it's very clear that um, an, an entrance ticket into this world of a startup nation today uh, is through um, um, studying engineering or computer science at one of the good universities in Israel, such as you know Tel Aviv, and so it's it was important for us to bring Arabs to all our different faculties and schools. But it was very important to make sure that they're represented in in adequate numbers in engineering and computer science, and that is something that we've actually succeeded in doing. Uh, and I'm you know I I feel that Tel Aviv. University should be very proud of that, right? Our, um, we've managed uh, this past year to reach the goal of uh, around 20% uh, of students in engineering, um, um, oh. Arab students. So we Both doubled male the number and of female Arab, Arab students. Yes. So, so we doubled the number of, of Arab students generally, but we tripled the number of Arab women who are studying engineering. Wow. Uh, so that their, their percentage in the School of Engineering is now the same as their percentage in the general population, which makes sense. And I have to say that we achieved this without lowering the, the entrance requ requirements or without you know, any special discount uh, on the basis of their, of their, um, of their excellence. Um, so that you, you know, out to their communities and high schools in the Arab uh, or Muslim towns, or how how did you get them? How did you get them to apply and come? So part of it is outreach, uh, bringing them to campus, uh, showing them life on campus, making them feel welcome on campus. A very large part of that, in both cases, you know, for Arabs, for the ultra orthodox, and for all the other uh, groups that we are trying to. Uh, increase the numbers of like Ethiopians, people with special needs, you know, and others, our, our, um, our, our, our strategy is to take a holistic approach. So our Dean of Students developed a kind of a multi, multi-faceted support system for these groups uh -huh. that includes scholarships, it includes uh, subsidized uh, private tutorials, it includes psychological support, uh, academic mentorship, um, career counseling, right? So that each student in these groups can find the thing that he or she needs in order to succeed at Tel Aviv University. Um, and, 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 you know, work is never done. We've had some success. We still, you can't rest on our laurels. There's still a lot more to do. Uh, for example, we progress with a number of Arab undergraduates, but we're still lagging behind in terms of uh, Arab graduate students, certainly in terms of Arab faculty members. Um, so, you know, this requires constant work, constant investment of, of resources, but it's such an important goal um, that, you know, we, uh, we, we are really uh, devoted to uh, seeing, uh, you know, the goals met. It's amazing. And it ties into what you said in the beginning, right, about international diversity. If you sit in a lab, you said, right, with a Brazilian uh, researcher and an American researcher and a German researcher and an Israeli, how much, uh, how much more maybe productive or uh, pioneering you can be and move forward. And, you know, this is, I think, a sort of a mirror image with it, even within Israel. And I think if you combine the two, uh, you know, it, it really is, uh, <laughs> to quote your movie, uh, boundless or limitless, or, you know, there, isn't, there are no limits if you can get everybody uh, together towards, um, towards one goal. Um, just, uh, we have a couple minutes and there was another question about COVID. Um, they asked if, what has, as University of Tel Aviv, because we were talking about research, uh, any research you would like to mention or something that was found or a study that you did about COVID and Corona that um, might be worth mentioning? Yeah, I mean, there, as you said before, the, you know, the, the sky really is the limit. There's so much to talk about in terms of uh, what the university has done during this crisis. 
um, both in terms of our, um, you know, faculty members who are also doctors and, uh, you know, very busy at hospitals together with our, um, the School of Medicine students and nursing students. Um, and, uh, and of course, uh, research, you know, there's been a lot of uh, very important research done uh, during this, uh, this crisis. We've had an interdisciplinary center founded uh, for the, um, uh, the fighting pandemics that is truly kind of draws from all the different parts on campus, uh, from the sciences, but also from uh, the social sciences, the humanities, education. Interesting combination. <laughs> yes, and, and we've had also specific uh, research projects that uh, made, uh, made a big difference. Uh, for example, there was one um, project that stands out that was about um, genomic uh, sequencing. Uh, so the idea is that you can kind of track the, the progression uh, of the virus within Israel by, um, by um, um, under decoding the genomic um, uh, sequence. Um, of the of the coronavirus, and that had huge uh, consequences, both in terms of uh, understanding how the virus spreads and where it comes from. Um, and for example, one of the things that, that were discovered is how important super spreaders are in the spread of uh, coronavirus. Uh, how you know that they're responsible for most of the of the cases, uh, but also it had an impact on the way in which um, um, quarantine and 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 uh, lockdown policies were formulated. So there was a lot of action all over campus uh, that uh, tried to address this uh, um, this crisis. Um, and maybe I'll say one more thing about that. If we yeah. go back to, you know, my own uh, world of internationalization. Uh, one of the things that we discovered is that um, the, this crisis has actually produced a lot of opportunities. Um, and some of these opportunities are in, in teaching. Um, so whereas I think, you know, for American students, it is, uh, it's very common if you're an undergraduate to take a semester off and, and go for a semester abroad, right? It's part of the, it's part of the, the, the ritual experience. of being a college student. It's part of the experience. In Israel, not so much, because Israeli students are older, um, they are, you know, they, they have less uh, uh, resources to spend on, on a semester abroad, uh, the, the degree is shorter, so a very tiny percentage of Israeli students uh, actually have taken advantage of study abroad programs uh, in the past. But, you know, here comes this pandemic, everybody switches to Zoom, and suddenly it becomes easy to uh, create an international classroom. Even if students don't physically move from country to country, uh, Israeli students can now sit with, with uh, you know, a bunch of students from all over the world. So one example of that, which re your, your question reminded me of, is um, this semester, the School of Public Health is giving a course on vaccinations. Because Israel has had success uh, in vaccinating yeah. its population, yes. Uh, suddenly everybody wants to hear what the Israeli experts on vaccinations have to say. So we decided to open up this class on vaccinations, which is normally just for Israeli students, to students from all over the world. And, mm -hmm. and half of the students there are from the US, from Europe, from Asia, from Africa, from the Middle East. And they're now sitting in a classroom together with our local Israeli students. And it's just, you know, it's just fascinating. Uh, it's fascinating Amazing. for the international students who are learning something about Israeli expertise in vaccinations. But it's also fascinating for the for the Israeli students who are studying with students who have a very different perspective, very very different experience of the Corona uh, pandemic. So it's really a win-win, and that's uh, you know it's one of the silver linings of uh, of Corona. And we can only hope that this sort of participation, even when you do go back to physical uh, school, you will continue and keep it. Uh, you know, for the future as well. Do you know a, a combined or hybrid? As you said, the student in the U.S. can still join you via Zoom or from Africa, and um, that is amazing. We don't have much time left. So one, I'll say again, and, and we'll give information later as well, uh, for those who are thinking of perhaps applying because uh, the schools in, the U in Israel or Tel Aviv University will hopefully be, hopefully, as you said, we can't predict anything anymore, but hopefully we'll be open uh, for physical studies in the fall and the coming fall. So for students who would like uh, to apply or see what programs uh, Tel Aviv University has. But we had a question if you have 
uh, perhaps sort of like Coursera, does Tel Aviv University open uh, for non-students uh, courses or can they join different programs or seminars online for those of us who are a little older than, uh, than your regular university student? Yes, uh, Tel Aviv University does have a number of courses on Coursera. Uh, some of them are award-winning and, uh, you know, very successful. Um, and that's always a possibility. Uh, the other thing is that our, our international school, uh, as early as this summer, is going to open up uh, certain courses for an international, um, for international participation, including a course on COVID-19. Um, attacked from different perspectives. You know, one of the, the main things that Tel Aviv University is now uh, known for is uh, interdisciplinary research because it's a comprehensive university and, you know, has nine different faculties, more than 30 different schools. So we like to uh, uh, organize both research and courses that are interdisciplinary in, in nature. And so this course on COVID-19 is going to include uh, economists and kind of medical health professionals and psychologists and um, disaster management experts and historians and Middle Eastern studies experts, each of whom will bring his or her own, own perspective and kind of create this course. We already ran it once last summer, we're gonna run it again this summer. And I think it's going to be a, a great, uh, a great experience. Yeah, you'll have even more perspective this summer uh, to talk about it. Yeah, a growing, uh, a growing course. Yeah, and hopefully next year it can be a, one of your history, uh, <laughs> uh, history uh, lessons. Uh, Professor Milet Shamir, uh, you know, I said at the beginning, thank you so much uh, for you know joining us and talking with us here. It was really a pleasure and even more so in Women's History Month to see such an accomplished uh, acad academician, academian, what's the, anybody academic. know? Academic. <laughs> academic. <laughs> um, and, and really uh, any any day of the year, but I think, uh, you know, in, in this month, it does have an extra, an extra uh, little bit of importance to, to show. But, uh, you know, we've been talking about this uh, way before, not just for this month, because I think, uh, your story in uh, Tel Aviv University is very relevant uh, to our audience here who is both interested in Israel and uh, and in studying in Israel. Uh, we have a lot more questions and a lot more things I would love to talk to you about, but either in another opportunity or another time. And just I need to do a quick shout out uh, to Delit Parser, our academic uh, affairs coordinator, who you know well, who did uh, this program and the rest of our and the rest of our academia talk uh, sessions uh, in a very, very professional here. Another right good professional woman who's uh, moving things along. And of course, always our digital team. So thank you again, uh, Professor Shamir it was incredible. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It was a pleasure. Thanks. Have a good evening. <laughs> Have a good day. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.